Hey everybody, what's going on? So today we are going to be doing together a workshop on Azure pen testing or red teaming. And this is a workshop created by a somebody from Mandiant and uh, they created a full on Terraform script that will allow us to build a infrastructure with users, with roles, with apps, key vaults, so on and so forth, that will allow us to sort of follow uh, possible realistic scenarios uh, that simulate real threat actors and threat actors TTP. So it's really interesting. Um, it's nothing too complicated or too advanced, but it is uh, really good to see how it works. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I will follow the same walkthrough with a little bit of minor sort of changes from my side, uh, but I'm going to also be doing another video, a longer version, where I set everything up manually. So if you're not too comfortable with Terraform or if you prefer to see how things or you're curious to see how things are built up from scratch, I'm going to be doing that as well. So that's going to be another video. However, obviously, it's going to be a longer version where I'm going to be setting up everything from zero. All right, without any further ado, let's get started. So you can see here we have a couple workshops. I'm going to be doing the first workshop, KC1. And in this workshop, the solution is already provided. So I'm going to just copy this and put it in a text file so we can uh, reference it uh, as we go along. So the first thing is that we assume that we have access to a user called Chris Green. So we assume we have compromised the user Chris Green and we have access to their credentials. Now we can also see here that it says this user has application administrator which means they can administer applications that are added. One of the things they can do in administration of these applications is adding credentials. And when you have credentials for an application, you are allowed then to log in as that application, as the service principle of that application. And this is exactly what we're going to be doing in the first step. So here we can see that we're logging in as Chris Green. And once we are logged in, we can see a little bit of details about the tenant, the subscription, and so on. And uh, it's pretty much the same thing as you're going to be logging in through the portal. So I can actually do that using the portal. And once you're logged in, you can see this is a brand new subscription that I've created for this video, but I think I'm going to be using the subscription going on. Uh, but you can see when we go to the roles and administrators that this user, Chris Green, has the role of application administrator, which means that we can go and check out what applications there are there and we can add secrets and administer these applications. So that's basically what the walkthrough is telling us to do. So the next step is we are assuming we're not accessing the portal and we're doing pretty much the same thing, but using the client. So here we're listing the applications and we're just filtering out the display name and the app ID. We're going to need the app ID a little bit later. So we're going to take the app ID and we're going to force reset credentials as in create credentials or create a password that will allow us to log in as this application. And in the next video, I'm going to show you in details how that looks like in the graphical interface in the portal. And this is the new credentials now. So the app ID is pretty much the same, but we have now a new password that will allow us to log in as this application. So we are going to do just that. Now, before I log in, I want to clear out any uh, tokens, any account information. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to log in as the application. I'll just replace these parameters. So the app ID, the new password, and the tenant ID. And now I'm logged in. So let's see what kind of permissions do we have. Now that we are logged in, we're hoping that we have better permissions, which we already know by now by looking at the walkthrough, right? But let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to be listing my assignments, my roles. And we can see here that we have two roles. I have a key vault reader on something called innovation team key vault, which is a key vault. And we have also the role of Key Vault Secrets user. 
again on the same key fold, the innovations team key fold, which is really interesting. So that means I should be able as the service principal, as the application, to go and read some secrets, hopefully. Now, as Chris Green, if I go and check out the key vaults, you can see that I cannot do that. I don't have the permissions. However, as the application, I should be able to list the key vaults and their secrets. So let's just do that. So I'm going to go ahead and list the key vaults. And I can see here the name of the key vault. And I'm going to say list the secrets that are available in this key vault. And here we go. We can see we have one secret in this key vault called 4PW. This is for one of the users called Peter Williams. Now I want to get the content of this secret. I want to see what this secret is. So I'm going to say, show me this secret, secret show. And here we go. It looks like a password that we can use. Now, obviously these passwords I've set up when I ran the Terraform uh, script, but if you're running the Terraform script, you can set up whatever passwords you want. So if you're following along, your passwords might look different than mine. So now we have new credentials. We have access to a new user called Peter Williams. Hopefully this user will have better privileges or better roles. So let's go ahead and check that out. So I'm gonna sign out from Chris Green and log in as Peter Williams. I'll grab the password. And it looks like I cannot access the portal right now. So this is where we hit something called conditional access. This is basically, um, as the name suggests, it, I will be allowed access based on certain conditions. This is why it's called conditional access, or I might be blocked actually from access. But in this scenario, we will be allowed access if we are using a Linux platform. So that means I either have to log in from a Linux box or I have to simulate logging in from a Linux browser or a Linux based browser. So I'm gonna just do that using my edge on Windows. I'm gonna go ahead and change the browser agent and I'm going to simulate a Linux browser. And now if I refresh the page, go back to the portal. I try to log in as Peter Williams. All is good. I can log in. Fantastic. And you can see now that I have access to new resources that I didn't have access to before. As Chris Green, I didn't have access to this. When I logged in as the application, I also didn't have access to this. But because I was able to read the key vault and get the credentials for Peter Williams, now that I'm logged in as Peter Williams, I have access to a new resource called an automation account. So let's go ahead and see what's in this automation account. Now, usually in these automation accounts, you can find some credentials and I can see two credentials here, an SA account, which I would assume is for a database and an SQL admin, which I would also assume is for an SQL server or an SQL database. But unfortunately, I cannot reveal or uncover these passwords. Lucky for us, somebody have created scripts that will help us do that. So one of these scripts or tools is called Microburst that will allow us to pull out these uh, passwords in clear text. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, I'm gonna clear my context, clear the account information, tokens, etc. I'm going to run the script from Microburst that's gonna allow me to pull out the clear text credentials from the automation accounts. So we'll go ahead and run this command and I'm going to need the subscription ID that I got from the previous step. 
I'm going to be prompted to log in. And remember, to log in here, I need to be simulating a Linux environment or a Linux based browser. So I'm going to just do that. And once I'm logged in, the script is going to go ahead and try to pull out the credentials. Give it a few minutes to run and you can see here that I have now the clear text value of these passwords. And what I'm interested in is the password value or the username and the password uh, of the second set of credentials, the SQL admin. Why? Because that's going to allow me to go log in and read the contents of the database and get the PIIs. All right. So just again, following the walkthrough uh, from Manion. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to get the username the SQL admin, copy the password here and log in. So now that I'm logged in, I can see I have access to a SQL database or a SQL server, excuse me. And if I check out the access control, I can see that I have a role of the reader. So hopefully I should be able to read the content of this SQL server, including a database. So let's see what databases exist. So I'm going to just go to the SQL databases over here. And let's see if we can run some queries. Because I'm already logged in, I'm hoping that I have permissions to access this database. So depending on how this is set up, maybe I have to log in using SQL Server authentication, which you see on the left hand side, or I can actually use the Active Directory authentication, which is what I'm using right now. And it looks that I'm allowed to do that. You can see these green tick marks, which indicates that I'm allowed to log into the database. So now I'm logged in, I can look at the tables and I can just go ahead and run a select query. And here we go. I have now access to the customers table. And that's it. So that was a quick video walkthrough of this workshop that was created by Mandian. Um, really nice, interesting workshop. So it shows some uh, threat actor TTPs and shows how you can abuse certain misconfigurations in RBAC and so on. And as promised in the next video, I'm going to be doing a longer version of this. So instead of just doing the walkthrough and showing you the walkthrough, I'm going to actually set things up from scratch. So we're going to assume that there is no Terraform script, uh, even though it's super convenient to use the Terraform script. But if you don't want to, if you want to set things up from scratch, step by step, I'll walk you through this and the format of the video is going to be, we'll set something up and then we'll go back to the command prompt. So we'll run some commands and we see the result of our setup and then we'll move to the next step, so on and so forth. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon in another video.